Check it out, I made a painting handle. All it took was a tiny 3D printed adapter and some magnets. If you think that sounds interesting, stick around. I'll uh, show you what I did to make it happen. Hi everyone, welcome back to my desk. And today what I have for you is a pill bottle, but um, it's not gonna stay a pill bottle. This is gonna become a painting handle, courtesy of my good friend William, who has a fantastic painting handle that uh, I wanna try and mimic. So what I think I'm gonna do, cause this is one of those kind of pill bottles that you can flip the thing upside down like this. So it's got these little teeth in here, you see? Can you see those? Yeah, little teeth. I'm gonna try and put a flat across in here under these teeth, just a disc. No, wait, I'm calling an audible. I've changed my mind. We're not gonna put the disc in the bottom of this and flip this over. Reason being, I forgot I had a plan. Uh, well, there is no plan, you can tell. Um, what I'm going to do, well, crap, I popped this out now and there's not really any reason. Hmm. The thought process is if I take this and I file this down so that it won't stop when it, it has this, this, it's got a child tamper mechanism in it. If I don't do that, if I just put this on here and the child resistant tamper mechanism is disabled, so this is like this way up. If that's disabled, then this ring will spin either direction. So I won't have to touch my model or the base in order to rotate it. I could just rotate this ring. I'm gonna go ahead and look to trim this down. I'm gonna find a, um, a tool for that. I have two ideas for how I'm gonna remove these grooves. First one is this, which I think is probably bad. I shouldn't tell y'all to do this because while I might do it for myself, actually a nice sharp blade does cut through this really easily. Hmm. Maybe this isn't such a bad idea, but you do need to be exceedingly careful because uh, lots of people yell all the time about how's the right way to cut and what's not the right way to cut, etc., etc. But um, I'm a bad child and I cut towards myself. The other thing that I saw that was a potential good way to cut this, and actually the way that I would recommend for everyone who isn't me and stupid. If you're not me and stupid, you would get one of these nail files, which I recommend anyway. These things are great and I'm running low, which is why you can see this one's already been used. Um, it's my last one. So I'm gonna um, just file this down a little bit on the rough side. That will do, that does take the edge off. Ooh, actually maybe it won't. How far do they go? Oh no, they do go back the whole way. Oh, that's not good. That's not gonna work. Not Neither of these methods will work. All right, method three. I have here a, uh, a Dremel tool, a multi-tool, a something like this. Now, I wouldn't wanna use one of these. In fact, I don't wanna use one of these. So make sure that you are wearing proper eyewear and um, that you hold it very tight. Um, I also recommend one of the ones that you can adjust the speed because this is actually quite a nice little feature. Hot and molten plastic is no joke, y'all. All right, let's check. What do we got here? It looks like I am gonna need that X-Acto blade after all. And I'm gonna need a, uh, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna need a vacuum. All right, y'all, I'm not gonna show me a vacuum. I don't care enough. Um, now, I am gonna pop this back on there because I'm a glutton for punishment, and if I'm wrong, I'll have to take it back off and it'll be a pain in the butt. If I'm right, though, Now it will spin in both directions. Which means all I have to do is put my magnet in here and cap the top off of this. I think I might not even wait to 3D print something. I might just glue something on there and call it good. Oh, magnets. These are what I have handy. Just gonna take a little stack of two of these. 
Wow, those are so magnetic. I do have room for three. All right, I'll put a third one in there. So I'm planning to just stick three of those in there, capture them in when I glue the thing on the top, and then I have a painting handle. I just need the attachment bit. Cool. Uh, I'll be back when I have glue or something. Okay, so what we're doing is we are trying to figure out what this thread in here is, right? Inside the top of this little lid. Now, conveniently, this thread is the exact same as this thread, because this thread is much easier to get to to measure than the one on the inside of this. So that's what we're gonna measure. I'm gonna take my little calipers, zero them out. They are millimeters, right? I think that's correct. So, oh, I'm not looking at the camera. So from the bottom of the thread to the bottom of the thread is around about four and a half millimeters, uh, four, four point, four millimeters, somewhere in there. We don't have to be exact. We're only looking at one thread worth of, um, of thread. So this profile of this thread is a little bit weird. It's not uh, a triangle. It's flat on the bottom and something on the top. I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll see what happens. Oh, one more thing. Uh, we need to know what's the height of our thread. So we can get the distance for the root of the thread, the, uh, the, the diameter of the cylinder, uh, if there's not glare, which there's always glare, there we go, 34 and three quarter, and then we can measure across the, across the thread. So we have two times the thread diameter is 36. Yeah, 37. So it's 37 to 35-ish. So it's two millimeter threads. So this is probably, let's see, I can also zero on the thickness of the thing. And then I can measure the thread. So yeah, one and a half. Yeah, one, one millimeter, one point. 1.2 millimeters, so just a little bit more than a millimeter. From here, we're going to make another one of these. We're gonna do this, we're gonna make a nice little thing like that. Yeah, and then I'm gonna finish sketch, pull this. Extrude, we're gonna pull this out like this. So what we're gonna do is this inner diameter, Seven millimeters, is that too deep? Is that deep enough? I don't know. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so this inner diameter, which you can modify by going back on the sketch here. Oops, what did I just click? Edit sketch, so dimension. Uh, I'm gonna make this, let's see. Uh, this is gonna capture the magnet, determine how much space it can wander around. I think 15 millimeters would be good. And then the external diameter, this is going to be a threaded surface for uh, screwing in. Uh, I think I'm gonna make this, let's see. It needs to be at least, it has to be at least 35. Its maximum is 37.75, so 35, 37.75, so 37.1. Yeah, okay, that'll work. Base sketch, this actually needs to be a little bit wider. Edit sketch, I'm gonna make this, this is gonna be 40, 42. Um, and I'm gonna make it Hmm, we should have defined this differently. Uh, I'm gonna make this a little thicker. I'm gonna make this two millimeters. Um, and I'm gonna actually, uh, this. Edit sketch. I'm gonna pull this 15 out. And I'm gonna redefine this from here.
dimension. Fifteen. Uh, finish sketch. Gonna click that. Gonna extrude that. Uh, two object. This one millimeter. One millimeter off. Uh, oh, negative one. All right, that should make sure that that's one millimeter thick. But this gets to be thicker. I'm gonna put a chamfer on it. No, I'm gonna do a fillet. Feels more fancy. <laughs> All right, so this surface here, I think I'm going to put a thread on. This is the bit that I can screw up. Okay, so I admit I tried to make a thread the way that I learned how to do it in SolidWorks, and I struggled a lot. Basically, you make a profile and you have it chase around a guide curve, or spline, but I was really struggling to make it work, so instead I turned to our good friend, YouTube, to find someone who could help me. I'm currently working on a small project where I need a thread in my 3D printed part, because it needs to be threaded onto a faucet outside. We don't want to start our thread on the top surface of this part, because then it will start cutting immediately, creating a, a hard edge. So what you want to do is you actually want to start your cut above the top surface of the part so that you can progressively cut into it. All right, so from the plane above, the reference plane above the part, we're going to press S to make a coil. All right, we want to draw our circle, which we're gonna set to be 37 millimeters. Then we, it's already set to triangle, so we're gonna leave it on a triangle, but you come in here, set it to triangle internal. Um, we want to change the section size to, I believe that's gonna be our four. Yep, so that's a much more reasonable cut. Uh, the height, we're gonna, you can either adjust with one of these or you can come over here. I'm actually just gonna pull this down so you can see it goes below the part. So what you actually want when you're trying to design, well, reverse engineer which thread you're after, is you probably want to be on revolutions and height. So I know that I have one resolution um, over a height of not a hundred, oh for goodness. I think the height was six millimeters, but we want to reverse that and make it negative six millimeters. So um, the problem is when you want to extend the amount of revolutions, so say I say this is 1.5, it increases the number of threads in that same set height. So I believe what I did is I said, all right, I know it is one thread per six millimeters in height. And I hope that's correct because otherwise I'm going to look like a fool now, but height per one thread. And you can say, okay, then you can come back into here you can edit the feature, and if you switch it to revolution and pitch, so now my pitch is fixed, it is locked in. If I want to add an additional revolution, I can say 1.5, and it adds an additional revolution without changing the height that each revolution equals. So that's how you can add more threads once you have your height per one thread. and. Uh, if we go to one and a half, we know it's a little bit too far. You dig in quite a bit here, which we don't want to do. So I'm just going to edit this. We're going to say edit feature. We're going to say 1.35. And then I'm going to hit OK. And this is our thread. Perfect. Wait, I did that wrong. That stays there. This goes in here oh my god it worked this is rev one if we're supposed to spend like seven more revisions on this to make it work all right let's put the magnet in there oh wait no magnet goes in here then this goes upside down 
and then you put this and you screw it on there and oh my god it's perfect do I have a handy I do I'm blown away Ooh. dang all right to be fair that's a little bit a little bit bigger than a magnet than I use but still fantastic well um I guess I gotta go and design a um a paint handle thingy brace yeah brace to put your hand on while you're painting mm -hmm. gotta do that next I took this to my buddy who's got one and he told me that I had installed the uh, the thing wrong. So if you put it in this end, it rotates like it's supposed to. <laughs> but I, I didn't I didn't do it right. But still, it rotates. That's cool. 